This is the River Hawk Report, a weekend wrap-up. Hockey and basketball and indoor track and field all in action, and it was a good weekend. We'll start on the ice. The Hockey River Hawks grabbed three out of four Hockey East points all on the road, and that in itself is a pretty good weekend. And both games, a hard-fought trench warfare battle Friday night at UNH and an explosive Saturday night at Northeastern went overtime. One ended with exhaustion, the other with dramatics. Games come in a lot, all shapes and sizes. You know, they're 60 minutes long or 65 minutes long for, for a reason. You've got to play every second of every minute, every period along the way. Defense hockey head coach Blaze McDonald will take the Friday night affair first. A 2-2 tie in an unfriendly Whittemore center. A hard-earned point in the standing. We played well. It was another good effort by us. Tough place to play and, uh, you know, overall it's uh, some positive momentum. UNH got on the board first, but the Riverhawks held a 2-1 lead after one period on goals by Corey Felitti and Colin Wright. UNH would tie the game mid a flurry of Riverhawk penalties on a power play in the third period and that's the way things would end. Campbell swings around a man. Campbell forced to go behind the net. Now the Blair shot, save, rebound! Fellini shoots and scores! And we are tied in a goal apiece. Blair with the puck moves to the middle, tees it up, and fires, and scores! Ryan Blair with a bomb! And unless, unless Colin Wright got a piece of that going in. Castle, and, uh... cross in front, shot by Di Simone, he scores! And New Hampshire has tied it on the power play and they'll... Riverhawk goaltender Nevin Hamilton turned in a terrific performance. 24 saves, several of them of the spectacular nature. Second period, they really came at me and I think that was huge for my play the rest of the game. Uh, get that action right off the bat, make some good saves. Got me right back in the game to help my team tonight. No rest for the weary. The Hockey River Hawks were back in action Saturday night against a well-rested and stubborn Northeastern club. A very different hockey game. The River Hawks led most of the night three times by three goals, but needed an extra period to grab the win. A 6-5 final. You know, I'm very proud of the guys, obviously, because I thought their mental capacity to overcome a lot of adversity in the third period was really good. You could feel it on the bench that, you know what, we're going to win this thing. And, you know, your mind takes over in a game like this, usually it's not so much your body, it's your mind that allows you to get it done. So I I think justice was served. We uh, we deserve the victory and we're able to get it. UMass all got goals from Chris Auger, Paul Worthington, Jeremy Daner, Scott Campbell, and two from Michael Shue, including the overtime game winner. Off the boards, tipped ahead into the attack, so by Shue on the stick of Auger, wheeling and dealing in the slot, turn, fire, scores! Chris Auger, a Felitti pretty goal. able to break in. Felitti controls now in front. Deflected by Worthington. Score! Riverhawks take a 2-0 lead. Saucer pass Beautiful. to Daner. We're back to 5-on-5. Five five. Daner into the attack zone. Left side. Steaming toward the net with a shot. Save is made. Rebound. He circles the net. And jams at home. Riverhawks take a 3-0 lead. Individual Shouse effort. shot. Deflected. Loose. Campbell shot. Score! Scott Campbell picks up. OJ keeps it in, got it to Valorani in the left corner. Valorani put it across in front. Shot by Shoe, he scores! And the River Hawks respond. They've taken a five. Puck behind the net. Tuckerman put it in front. Driscoll shot, score! And it's a one goal hockey game. Good job, kept it in the zone. Now a blue line shot, save is made. McLeod on the rebound, shoots and scores! It's a 5 5 hockey game. Joust. Got it in the middle of the Campbell, now to Felitti. On the left side, Felitti. Put it across in front. Deflected by Shu. They score! River Hawks win. River Hawks win. River Hawks win in an overtime 6 5 final. Oh, that's just a beautiful pass from him. Uh, started in the zone there. It's a great breakout. Uh, Subi got nice and low there. Hit Felitti up the wall, and uh, I just went to that hard. Felitti found my stick. River Hawks win it. River Hawks win it. The goal will be Mike Shue deflecting in the pass by Felitti. The Riverhawks, a 6-5 win in overtime. Oh my goodness. Not to be overlooked was the performance of the Red Hot Corey Felitti. The Bill Ricca native's four-game goal-scoring streak was ended, but he picked up three assists, including the key pass on the game winner. Corey Felitti is very talented, and, uh, you know, he's clearly got a lot of confidence in his game. He's got a lot of thoroughness in his game right now. If he continues to play this way, there's no question in my mind he is an elite, if not one of the best players in, the, in all of hockey East. In 6-5 final, the Riverhawks sit in fourth place, a tie with UMass Amherst. Those two teams will meet twice next weekend, so fasten the seatbelts. 
basketball had a good weekend. Both men and women both battled New Haven. Each was a winner. Basketball voice Pat Riley has the details. In their first home game of 2010, the UMass Lowell women's basketball team took on a hungry New Haven squad looking for their eighth win of the year. After tying 29-29 through the first 20 minutes, UMass Lowell got things rolling in the second half. Pass down low, tipped and stolen again for UMass Lowell. Quick outlet ahead, Valenti. 48-32, Valenti makes it 50-32, add one more. A 22-3 run capped by Jen Valenti's layup gave the Riverhawks an edge they would not relinquish, winning 74-61. Valenti finished with 15.6 rebounds. She was bettered by her teammate Shanae Bushner, the sophomore from Akron, Ohio. 20 points, 7 rebounds in the win for Lowell. They moved to 8-5 overall. The Riverhawks now 4-5 in the NE10. The UMass Lowell men's basketball team opened 2010 at home against the New Haven Chargers, a team that came in 1-11, but they would prove stickier than their record suggested. A 48-47 game late in the second half, then Lowell rocked off a 19-0 run led by their star point guard. And the Hawks on defense. Kaola steps in front of a steal all the way to the rim. Kyle Kaola for two. 60-47, a 13-point edge. Kyle Kaola's 24 points helped lead the River Hawks to a 67-48 victory. Hawks 10-3 overall, perfect at home, and 7-2 in the Northeast 10. I'm Pat Riley for the River Hawks Sports Network. Both basketball teams will be back in action on Tuesday. They face Adelphi in Garden City. UMass Lowell women's indoor track and field, a good showing at the Dartmouth Relays. A fourth place finish in an event that included teams from all three university divisions, Canadian schools, and postgraduate track and field clubs. The 4x400 meter relay team grabbed a first place finish, and shot putter Jackie Barrett turned in the team's top individual performance. She finished second overall, first among collegiate athletes, with the personal best throw of 45 feet, 11 and 3 quarter inches. The men's team turned in a strong performance performance at Dartmouth as well. Shot putter Corey Murray finished fifth overall and provisionally qualified for the NCAA championships with a throw of 52 feet, four and three quarter inches. Angus McDonald finished fourth in the 3,000 meters, tops among Division II three athletes. The event was won by former UMass Lowell runner Nate Jenkins competing for Saucony. Freshman Craig Bennett finished second in the 400 meters, tops among collegiate runners. Senior William Nagijoy topped Division II three athletes in two events. The triple jump and the long jump. Advance the Riverhawk Report for Monday, January 11th, 2010.